Welcome to the Bigfoot Society. In this remastered episode, we talk to Tristan Yolton, who shares some incredible recordings he's captured over the years in the Bumping Lake area of Washington. If you've experienced something similar to what Tristan has or have more information regarding Bigfoot or other cryptids in the same areas, please reach out immediately to me after this episode. Remember, your encounter could be the key to unlocking this mystery once and for all, so please don't hesitate to contact me at BigfootSociety at gmail.com. All right, Bigfoot Society, you've got the privilege of talking to Tristan Yolton today. Uh, he's a Bigfoot researcher from Washington State. How's it going today, Tristan? It's going great. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, you got it. It's uh, a lot of people have been throwing your name around, and I, I remember seeing you in uh, Tate's I believe it was a Bumping Lake documentary he did in his series, Sasquatch, Search for Sabe. But is there anything else that the uh, listeners should know about you, Tristan, to kind of set the stage? Well, growing up, I, I've always been interested in, in monsters and creatures and, and Bigfoot was one of the things I was interested in. But I was never I was never interested in going out there looking for it. It's just something that like I like dinosaurs and aliens and things like that Godzilla I like those kind of things growing up and, and Bigfoot was just another another thing that I liked that I was interested mm. in but but I never had any I didn't want to go out there look, to look for it I just thought it was just something cool so that all changed for me though in 2015 when my father heard some whoops coming up from this hill behind our house one morning while he was taking the trash out and he didn't tell us about this until a week later because he didn't really think anything of it. But I guess he was kind of stewing about it and maybe thought maybe it could be Sasquatch. So he brought it up to me and my mom and we were like totally surprised. And and so we decided to go up there. Me and my mom decided to go up on the sill. We uh, left a recorder out and a, and a jar of peanut butter and some peanut butter crackers. Mm-hmm. And the next day when we went up there, the the jar looked like, the jar uh, looked like there was a hand that went inside of it. You could see some possible dermal ridges on, on the inside of the jar and possible finger holes inside of it. Possibly something took its hand in there and scooped it out, scooped out the peanut butter. And the peanut butter crackers were, they were gone, but they looked like they were opened very neatly, not ripped open like some kind of, like a bear or something would do it. It kind of looked like somebody carefully opened it and took the crackers out and ate it. And the weird thing is, the most weird thing is, is I had this recorder strapped to a stump with a bungee cord on it. And when I went over to it, the the recorder looked fine. It, it looked like nothing touched it. But when I went home and listened to it on the, on the computer, about an hour after we left the recorder up on this hill, and it, it, it became dark, I, I would say about an hour later, something came in. And as you hear on one of the recordings I have, you'll hear it eat the food and then it I guess it sees my recorder and comes over to the recorder and starts growling and messing with it, fumbling with it. I, and I mean <laughs> the thing is I there's no marks on the recorder or anything like that. So I had no idea that occurred. And I, I've left recorders out in the woods before and I've had bears take them and chomp on them and eat them the oh, eat wow. them the bits. And this whatever this thing was didn't do that. So that was very strange to me. And was that a bear that did this? I have no idea, but it, it's not the same kind of behavior that I've experienced with other recorders. So it really makes me wonder. And also on the recording, there's this really loud, at the beginning of it, there's a really loud humming a humming feedback kind of a sound. And I don't know if that's a moth going by or something else, hmm. but it's some kind of weird interference that just goes by the recorder. And then a, a few seconds later, you'll hear a possible wood knock in the background and a whoop. And then about 30 seconds later, that's when you start hearing this thing start coming in and start eating the food. And then you'll hear a loud, really deep growl. I guess it sees my recorder. And then about a few seconds later, that's when you hear it come over to the recorder and start really growling and messing with the fumbling with the recorder. So and, and then it, after that happens, it just it just leaves. It just stops what it's doing and it just leaves and there's just silence. So again, if it, if it was a bear, I, th- I would think the bear would really try to try to eat it and scratch it and chomp at it. But my recorder was intact. There was no scratches or tooth marks or anything on it. So that really perplexed me. And, and to this day, I have no idea what, what that was. But 
with some of the sounds that you can hear on the recording, such as such as the possible wood, wood knock and a whoop in the background, mm. makes you wonder what was going on up there. <laughs> That is really weird because it is a it's an interesting one. Let's give listeners a little bit of uh, context in that area where you had those Bigfoot interactions at the beginning. Are you comfortable with a certain region of Washington that you were in to give context for the listener? I'll just say it's it's near the Cascade okay. Range near the mountains. Sure. Yeah, it's not it's not near the Olympics or anything like that, like where the Olympic project is. It's mm. like totally near the mountains. So, and that's the thing too, like this area around where I am, it's surrounded by forests and mountains everywhere. So it's Mm. the possibility of a Sasquatch being around is very, very high, in my opinion, very possible. What I think is happening or was happening, because I don't, I don't even know what, if they're still going on up there, if that's what they are, if that's what it was, but we were thinking maybe this, this hill was a travel route for them. And maybe they're going to and from like every night or every few days or something like that through there. Cause there's no, there's really no, at the time there's really no development up there. There was, it's just pretty much woods up there and there's a, there's also a stream up there. So maybe they were, they, they felt comfortable in traveling that as a route every night or whenever they wanted to during, during the night without being detected Absolutely. or being seen by anybody. And one, one other thing I want to mention about my dad's encounter, if you want to call it after what well, the thing is he was taking the trash out in the morning and then he was going to go to work. So on his way to work down, the, down our road here, 
he saw a herd of elk standing in the middle of the road, and they were all looking up towards the direction of this hill up here. Mm. So they must have they must have heard those whoops that my dad heard, and maybe that spooked them. My dad had to drive around that herd of elk that was standing in the road. He thought that was very odd behavior to see them do that, to be focused on the hill up there. I, I can't say for sure that that was a Bigfoot, but it really makes you wonder, though. It sounds like you got interested in the whole B- Bigfoot thing. Is that right? Yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah, definitely. It was pretty shocking to me because after all these years of living out here, I never had a clue that if Bigfoot exists, that they would probably be right right near where where i live Mm. so that was a huge shock to me and that really got me interested in maybe i should start investigating this more and the audio of course hearing the audio just really that really started it so so yeah after i did that i started i I started checking around i started looking on 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 websites for sightings and and bigfoot groups and i won't say the name but we did get in contact with the bigfoot group and we started searching with them for for a few years, I'll go on campouts with them. That was able to teach me some more things about what's going on out there, possibly. But unfortunately, I haven't really I haven't really experienced that much with that group. Being part of that group, though, it did teach me things of what to look for and maybe how to approach some of my research. So it's mostly been on my own kind of research. Is that where I've able to where I've been able to collect things mostly. But I will say there's been some times where I have collected some audio, like like at Bumping Lake. If we would go to Bumping Lake, I would collect some audio there with them. So talking about Bumping Lake, which if you're in the Bigfoot community, that's a buzzword area that's been going around quite a bit over the last few years. Can you describe the Bumping Lake area? From what I know, it's, it's an a lake that is to the east of Mount Rainier, correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah, roughly. Mm -hmm. Yes. Very high up in elevation too, 3,000 feet or so up up in elevation. There's two ways you can get there. There's one way from Yakima to get there. And there's another way through to get there called Chinook Pass, where where you basically have to climb up this pass, up this mountain to get there. But for me, it takes almost three hours to get to Bumping Lake. And the Bumping Lake Road itself, it will take you 45 minutes to an hour just to get to the lake itself. It's a long, the main road getting there is a long road to take. And then there's some campsites. So here's the thing. The Bumping Lake is very huge. It's a very huge lake. There's some primitive campsites behind it. There's a there's a dirt road behind it, which leads to these primitive campsites. And that's where we like to go in terms of our, our campouts because it's, it's away from the lake. It's more towards the mountains. And there's some RV camp spots right next to the lake. And that's that's where a lot of people congregate and populate there. And we try to get away from that as much as we can. And obviously, during the summer, it's very popular. You'll see a whole bunch of people out there fishing and rafting, doing all the, all sorts of stuff out on the lakes. The surrounding area of Bumping Lake is just a forest of mountains. And mm. in my opinion, it's perfect habitat for these guys. Like, they'll... There's elk there, all sorts of wildlife. And of course, you got the big lake, the source of water. And there's also little creeks and streams around and a lot of woods, a lot of high peaks and everything. Like it's it's perfect for these guys to be there. And uh, yeah. Are there reports going back pretty far of seeing Bigfoot there? Or is this a thing where it's just more recent times that people were realizing that there have been Bigfoot seen and heard in that area? Kind of like what you mentioned, like Bumping Lake has been, it seems to be more popular in the past few years. But from what I understand, it's been kind of like a secret area for a lot of Bigfoot researchers. Not, not a lot of people know about it until maybe the past couple of years. But I guess that's because more people are hearing about it and, you know, taking more people up there. Kind of like what happened with my Bigfoot group is that they took us up. Right. There. It, it wasn't really a well-known thing everywhere. It was just more kind of a secret area for a lot of the, I would say maybe Washington researchers, as far as how far back, I, I mean, it could be back from the eighties and nineties from, 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 from what oh, wow. I know. Yeah. There could be a lot of people. I I know people going up there for years, so it could be reports could be stretching from years back, possibly. Mm. I bet you can probably search for reports dating back, back then too. So Oh, no doubt. Yeah. If you know, if you know where to look for those, you know what I mean? Right. Exactly. Yeah. So. 
I was looking through all the files and folders you sent over. And yep. one of the things I got right away is that you've been studying, you've been researching this area and gotten evidence out of it for multiple years. There were folders 2020, 2021, 2022, right? Mm -hmm. yep. um, what, what kind of things have come out of your time researching in the Bumping Lake area that, that you consider interesting? when it comes to Bigfoot research? Well, I, I guess the main thing for me at Bumping Leg is gathering audio at these primitive campsites. As I named in some of the folders, there's one called California Camp. There's two main, for, for me, there's two main camps that I go to that, that were introduced to me with my Bigfoot group that, that I was going with. One is called California Camp, and another one is called Rock Camp. and the interesting thing about those is that they're they're a mile apart from each other. They're not that close to each other, but they're still very far out there. They're very remote, primitive camp spots. And Rock Camp, for example, was very popular with the Bigfooters. Like I, I've gone there and I've seen other Bigfooters camp there. So it's a very well-known spot. And I know I know that Bob Gimlin, he's been there before and he's had some stuff happen to him there. Oh, really? Uh, That's cool. Yeah. So yeah, it's a very it's a very popular spot, and but yeah, they call it Rock Camp because it's it's a it's a camp that's kind of it's a, it's like a circular a circular camp that's surrounded by some high cliffs and peaks behind it, and there's a rock a big rock shell behind it, and but I guess that's where they got Rock Camp from. I really don't know for sure, but gotcha. that's what I'm assuming why they call it Rock Camp. I. And for me, that's the majority of my Bigfoot audio, if you want to call it that, has occurred at this camp. There's a little hill above, there, there's a, within this big circle, there's a camp, there's like a main campfire. And behind it, there's just a bunch of woods, basically. And then there's like a rock shale, and then that mountain peaks mm. behind it, all surrounded by woods. If you watch Tate's documentary, you'll see some of that. And the thing is, I believe that if there's Sasquatch there, they are coming down from that from that mountain mountain peak and rock shell, and they're coming down to this hill that's right above our camp, and they're watching us at the campfire or doing whatever. But I think they're I think they come down and watch us from this hill that's behind us. I possibly mm. think they're juveniles because I when I put an audio recorder up in this hill, I've gotten some. I mean, as you, you probably heard on the audio. I've gotten some weird language kind of sounds and speech and chatter and, and stuff like that. And, and that's not us. We're not making those sounds at the campfire. That's, I mean, I, I have these recorders pointed at the woods and there's no campers behind us. That's all woods back up in there. So something's coming down and making those sounds, man. And I can't say for sure it's Sasquatch because wow. I didn't see it, but something is making those sounds. It could be juveniles doing that. That's Before we get opinion. into some of the audio, just to clarify, you've got the California camp and the rock camp, you said are a mile apart from each other, right? Yeah, yeah. Those camps are a mile. So there's like a dirt road, right? There's a, all, there's a, it's, it's a bumpy dirt road. It's really, it's not paved or anything like that. It's, okay. it's really rough on your tires. I would, I've seen people go through it like crazy, but they shouldn't because they'll, they'll pop a tire easily. It's a very, these are very primitive campsites. Some of the campsites are a mile apart. Others are like maybe across the road, but still, still a little ways away from each other. But like I said, like this rock camp, for example, there's no campsites behind, behind okay. us there. So there's no way anybody can come through there from behind. I'm getting like some of the, some of these sounds are happening way late at night too. So who the heck it, is out there yeah. behind us doing that? That's what I'm I'm curious as to the con. So you listen to some of these sounds and I'm like, I got to have the context in the story behind these sounds because some of them are wild, man. Let's go ahead and let's let's start with one of them. Okay. I'll play the sound first and then you can give the story behind it. So okay. here we go. Thank <laughs> you. 
That's cool. so wild, dude. So, so that wasn't recorded at Bumping Lake, which is fine. That okay. is that was recorded at an area about an hour away behind my house. Um, That's behind a, your house. Well, it's like an hour away from us. Yeah, there, yeah. It's not like right behind. I mean, there, there's a there's a forested area where there's logging that happens. About well, it's like warehouse used to be behind us back here and somebody else bought them out. Uh, but it's, mm. a, it's a big l- lumbered forest area that you can, in some spots you can only get in through a permit. There, there's some gates with, you have to you have a permit to get in. And sure. th- this, this area is one of those. It, it, I'll just say it's near a lake. It's, it's near a lake uh, behind one of these permitted gates. And my mom and I went, went to this spot one time and we were just researching. Oh, well, the thing is, we've camped in this spot before and <laughs> we've had I've had an audio recorder in a tree next to our truck. We camped in a truck one time and I had an audio recorder on this tree next to our truck. And during the night, something was throwing pebbles at our truck and you really? could hear a whoop. <laughs> yeah, you could hear a whoop, too. Oh, my goodness. So, uh, <laughs> so that really got me excited. <laughs> There's another time I camped there in the same truck and I put a recorder out in these woods here near this lake. And about three o'clock in the morning, I woke up and I said, you know what? I just want to get the hell out of here. So I'm going to go out there and I'm just going to get the recorder and come back and we can go home. So, okay. uh, so I did that. And the thing is, I didn't have a flashlight on me or anything like that. I just had the moonlight. So I just followed the moonlight to the recorder into these woods and when i picked up the recorder as soon as i picked up the recorder and turned around it was a loud growl behind me and no way. It, scared the, it scared the hell <laughs> out of me and i did not look behind me i just stared right ahead and i walked oh my all the goodness. way back to my truck all the way back to my truck and i got in my <sighs> got in my truck and my mom saw me and the first thing she said was you're as white as a ghost and what i wow. said was drive all i told her was drive and we got the hell out of there so that <laughs> so that really freaked me out and that that helped that helped get some interest in this area so she so that recording that you just played she and i went up there during the daytime and on her way out i did a really loud whoop where i was when i did the whoop i was away from the lake but close enough for the sound to carry across the lake but i couldn't hear I, from where where i was i can't hear anything coming from the lake so that whoop response there's two whoop responses you hear in it those i couldn't hear uh th- those were on the recorder when i listened to them so and the wood knocks okay. the wood knocks the wood knock sounds that you hear were me doing that so those okay. two whoop responses you hear after my initial whoop and then you hear the oh, okay, whoop, got whoop. it, got it, got it. The two whoops was something re- in response to me. Those two whoops there, and then so yeah, my there's my initial whoop, and then you hear the whoop whoop. Wasn't me. Wow. And then I did the knocks. I did the three knocks, and then you hear one more whoop, which which which, which was kind of like a build up. It goes whoop. Yeah. You know, like that that last wow. whoop was like a build up kind of a whoop. And that so wasn't me it was or your, anybody. You first, then your knocks, then two whoop responses. No, wait, wait. it goes like this. It goes, my first whoop, I go whoop. Yep. And something goes whoop, whoop. Okay. And I, again, I didn't hear that in person. I didn't hear that. Wow. And, and then, because, so that's the thing. I didn't. I didn't hear a response. So I just said, well, maybe I'll do a wood knock. Maybe I'll get something. Uh, okay. So after, so there, for me, for me, it was silence after I did my, my, my initial whoop. So I did three knocks. And then that's when you hear th- that response again, the, the build up response. It goes, whoop, whoop. Let's you listen play to it again. again Go for it. Yeah. Now that we have the story. Yeah. That's, that's fantastic. Yeah.
what what was your response when you heard that audio recorder and you heard the responses on there that you hadn't uh, heard in real life? Dude, it was total wow. Like, where the hell did this come from? Because I didn't hear that in person. And, and and there was nobody else out there with us, man. It was just me and my mom. So it was shocking. Total shock. Like, where did the hell did this come from? Because I couldn't hear it from where I was. So where where I had the recorder put where I had the recorder placed, I guess it was closer to wherever this thing was. So it was able to the recorder was able to pick that up, but I couldn't hear it with my own ears. So maybe the recorder maybe it amplifies sound. So maybe that's why you hear it better. But in person, man, I couldn't hear any of that. So that's why I did the whoop and then the knocks because I was thinking, well, if I'm not gonna get a response with a whoop, maybe I'll try some knocks. They're similar, but the response one does ramp up and yeah. oh man it's hard to describe but it's very cool that's the thing that wasn't my whoop you heard the second time or third time because i my whoop yeah. like, but this thing if you listen to it more it sounds more natural like a more natural kind of a whoop sound something that something that's different than me especially like that ramp like you're talking about that third one when it goes yeah. whoop, i wasn't doing that wow so, yeah <laughs> That's awesome, dude. That that's legit. Let's go on to another one. And this is this is the drumming one. I'm I'm really curious what this I'll play it for you so you're you remember. And then I'm just curious what the story is behind this one. Okay. What's the story there? Oh, yeah. I remember that one. That was, this was at Rock Camp. And me and, and, me and some fellow researchers were at, a, were at our campfire. And that's the thing, too. We like to make some noise at the campfire, try to hopefully bring okay. them in. That's our way of using drums and instruments and talking and laughing. We were hoping that will bring the Sasquatch in. And and so what happened on that one night is I, I had – the thing is I always have my recorders placed up on this hill behind camp, either just a, rigid, just a digital recorder or with a, with a parabolic mic as well. I, I got a parabolic mic a couple of years ago, so I've been using that more. Okay. But for this recording, I think I had a Tascam recorder for that and i just had that strapped to a tree and i have that pointed towards the mountain towards the woods that's another thing too i place these recorders pretty far up on this hill and into the woods i try to put them away far away from camp as possible but with the surrounding area around us any sound we make at the campfire is going to kind of echo around so i'm going to pick them up but if you hear in the beginning of that of that recording you'll hear like a female voice and like a real deep male voice closer to the recorder and i don't think that was one of us making those sounds like uh -huh. that last set that last sound where it goes rawr, rawr, rawr. <laughs> you yeah. know the real yeah. loud thing yeah that wasn't us man like, you don't know anything, what that is no anything close Whoa. to the recorder in my opinion is something that's close to the recorder not us oh my goodness that's why i'm saying like when you're when you hear those voices in the like those far off voices like it sounds like somebody's singing. I think that's one of us at the campfire. But when you hear something closer to the recorder, like there's a there's yeah. a female voice that's kind of that's close to the recorder, and it's saying something that you can't even understand what the, what she's saying because it sounds wow. like a different yeah. like a different language. And then you hear like a male response to that, I believe, towards the end of it, that real deep raw raw mm -hmm. sound. And again, that it sounds like a language that doesn't sound English or anything to me. So wow. I, I think they're conversing. If it's a Sasquatch, I think they're conversing with each other while watching us at the campfire. So yeah, you you hear us singing and stuff, and drumming in the recording as well. But if you hear some real, you know, close okay. voices, I think that's what could be Sasquatch, possibly. All right, let's listen so to that again. Then that's that's some good context. Here we go. <laughs> That's weird. Yeah. Oh so man, it, that is weird. Did, so did you hear that female kind of voice in the beginning? Yeah. And it sounds yeah. like a it sounds like a different language though to it, right? It doesn't sound like any kind of English. It, yeah, it's kind of hard to explain, but it's it it, it just sounds like a, some kind of odd native language to me. And and that response that was a real deep response when it goes about it's weird, man. 
Yeah. Yeah. Oh. So, yeah. Roughly how long ago was that? That might be from 2000. I, I don't know if it's dated on there, but it might be from 2020. I've been, I've been, yeah, the past couple of years, I've been getting a lot of audio up on that hill every time we go there. Okay. Um, in fact, I even got some during Tate's um, expedition as well. I think I included those in, in your folders. Mm. But on the, on the last night we were there with Tate, Paul Graves is playing his guitar and singing. And then up on the hill there, you, you get a couple of response stuff happens. There's a, there's something that goes, whoa, whoa. And then you hear like a wood knock or like a whack sound. <sighs> now, we're, the real funny thing about this stuff is that we don't really hear the, we don't hear the stuff in, at the campfire. This is all That's on the recordings. True. There, there's been a couple instances though, and I don't know if I, I can't remember if I included them in the files, but we had a friend at the campfire one time and he went, whoa. And then on um, from the hill behind us, you can hear something mimic him twice. And I actually heard really? that person. Yeah. Oh man. Yeah. And I, I can't remember if I, I can't remember if I have that in your audio recordings that I sent you, but yeah, that's. I don't remember that one. It goes, or maybe whoa. I just didn't know what it was at the time. It's all good. But that's one um, of the things we've heard at that campfire is like those wow. kind of responses. If these are Sasquatch, I think they're juveniles coming in to watch us and messing with us. It's that's almost like you need is. you need a way to do like a live monitoring of the audio that's being captured in your camp at the yeah. same time that you're recording. I don't know if there's even a way to do that. That's cheap enough for for most Bigfooters. Myself yeah. included. I've thought about camping up on this hill, but I'm kind of afraid to. But at the same time, I kind of want to do it now just to see if something happens, if I see anything. Because, um, well, I don't know. Tristan, if you don't, you're going to be regretting it for the rest of your life. You're, when right. you're an old dude, you're going to be like, I should have done it. Dude, you should do it. That would I be probably wild. Should. That, oh, man. I probably should. But again, is that going to deter them? I don't know. Well, maybe they feel well, comfort. Maybe they feel comfortable on a hill. So if I go up there and actually stay up there, maybe that'll scare them off. So I don't know. Or they might feel threatened. I mean, you never know unless you try, right? Exactly. You yeah, unless you try. And, and yeah. another thing I want to bring up is that there's been some forest fires up up in Lake the past couple of summers. Oh, and really? So that, I, th I think that might have just disrupted some things. So and that's the other thing, too. Not every time you go there, you're going to get something. And so that I think everybody should know that is that don't always expect to get anything every time you go there. It's just luck. And 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 also real quick, that recording I sent you, the 30 minute one, the one I played yeah. on Alex's show, the chorus. <laughs> yeah. That was a that was a California camp a couple of years ago. With, okay. It was just it was just me and my mom camping there. And at two o'clock in the morning, these things started going off and it woke me up. But unfortunately, her hearing isn't the best the best or she couldn't hear it in person. But I'll okay. tell you, man, like the recording doesn't do it justice. It was so freaking loud. Mm. And wow. it was coming from different directions too. It wasn't coming from one source. Um, um so I I don't know what it was. I, I can't say for sure it was Sasquatch, but in my personal opinion, it's either Sasquatch or somebody making those sounds. It's I don't think it was any other animal out there. Because it, it sound they sound like it sound like some kind of vocal, like some kind of vocal track making those like a hunt, human so way crazy. doing that so what what tristan is referring to is he was if most people are going to be aware of who alex petikoff is from beyond the trail he used to have a interview youtube series live stream and tristan's been on it two times correct two different shows yes. and you were two able to play shows. a lot a lot a lot of the audio on those shows. So after this one, head on over. I definitely recommend you head, head on over, listen to the two Tristan episodes on Alex for even more sounds. What I have next is when I saw these two sounds, I was excited to hear the story because I have a story that is very close to those sounds myself okay. as listeners will know, but I'll, I'll play, I'll play them and then we'll get your story here. So go ahead. So those are recorded at rock camp behind again, up on this hill behind us. I, I just have these recorders out, man. They're just pointed towards the woods behind us up on this hill. 
And yeah, these zipper sounds, I've, I've, I've actually captured these in different spots as well. There's been a couple other spots I've been to that, that I've captured zipper, these zipper kind of sounds. And so I, oh is it Sasquatch? Goodness. I don't know, but I, <laughs> I've heard other people talk about these kind of sounds before as well. So how far surprised. away is your recorder from camp approximately? See up on this. I mean, Wait a minute, we're talking yards. It's not like feet. We're talking yards up up, up on the okay. snow. I, I'm okay. not the best with distance, but I'm I'm telling you, it's not that close. Like you I walk up yeah. pretty far in there. I pointed it in the woods. And I just let it run. And then you get these things at one o'clock, two o'clock in the morning, three o'clock in the morning going oh, off. My goodness. On their own. And like I said, I've heard I've heard those zipper sounds. I recorded those zipper sounds in other areas as well. So I think there's something going on with that, you know? Obviously, you're not. Are are you leaving unzipping your tent during those nights? Um, no, the, okay. but, the, but these aren't near the. Those aren't these aren't near their tents, so they wouldn't even capture those kind of sounds. Yeah. Okay. So here's the weird thing. So I, I'm just going to give you the summary real quick, Tristan. Sure. So when I went on out with Tate in the Iowa episode of that documentary series, we had my recorder about, I mean, it was, it was far outside the campsite. It was not near the tent and I didn't leave my tent at all that night. And at around three 45, I get a sound recording of what sounds like a tent zipper sounded just like that. And I've been, I mean, I've heard similar stories, but like nothing as close as the story you just told me of that. You're capturing these zipper sounds not even close to a tent outside no. of the camp. That's wild, man. Yeah, man. No, it it, like these wonder. are far. These are far from my tent. So I, I, I figured it's just some kind of way of conversing with each other and some kind of communication that they do if it's them. Wow. And and like I said, I've heard this in other areas too. Uh, I've captured it. I've captured that same exact sound in other areas. So it makes me think it could be Sasquatch. Mm. But again, you don't. You can't see what's making it. So it makes you wonder. Um, but yeah, I, I'm glad you brought that up because I didn't, I didn't know about that. That's interesting. I haven't heard very many people tell me about that. Well, I've heard the same thing because I, I haven't really heard that before from other people. So that's interesting. It messed with me for, for quite a while, Tristan, and still, I, until I heard in a few other interviews I did with random people, how they've experienced the Sasquatch unzipping a food container at their camp and also a Sasquatch unzipping a tent. Mm. that a female was in out in the Pacific Northwest somewhere. But the, yours is different because it's obvious that it's making the sound because it's not close to camp, which kind of makes me interpret my my story in, in a way too. But it's just very interesting to think about. So thank you for that. Yeah, because I, yeah, I, I've wondered the same thing because the more you listen to it and the more that I've listened to it in other areas, I'm starting to wonder if Maybe it's just not a mimic of some kind. Maybe it's it's, mm. it's some kind of communication that they do amongst themselves. Definitely. I also have a record. I don't think I put it in in the files. I apologize, but I also have a recording where uh, <laughs> where the, there's a scene that comes out to a recorder and it makes a really loud whoosh sound with its mouth. It sounds like it makes it with its mouth, and then you hear it start oh, wow. talking. You hear it start talking with something else. But it's just funny when you hear this weird loud. Whoosh, like whoosh sound that it makes with its mouth. And that is intense. So I don't know what that's all about. It's pretty loud too. I, I, I guess I should have put it in with the other files, but I just have so many that it, it's a lot. Like, yeah, it's a lot. Listeners. You just have to imagine the most Bigfoot files you've ever seen. It's a lot. <laughs> yeah. Well, and the thing is, that I've been recording since 2015. I've been going out oh, there. Oh, yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. I That's why I have so many files. And that's the thing, too. Like, I, I recommend people record all the time as much as as much as possible. Because even, even when you're around, like, you won't even know. Even if you can't hear anything in person, that doesn't mean the audio recorder won't capture anything. That means... That's true. I... I I've able to, I've been able to capture things on my audio recorders while I'm there in person and I just never heard it. But mm -hmm. you hear it on the recorder, so I can't explain it. Let's let's play some more some more sounds here. Let's see what we got up next. Sure. Oh 
uh, that again, that was at rock camp behind on this hill again, behind our camp. And, wow. uh, and again, it, we didn't hear that in person, but on the recorder, you could hear it. But, oh, wow. But as you can tell, that was a weird language, right? That's weird, man. And then you hear the, then you hear the knock afterward. And I've heard that many times. I, but you hear that many times where you hear like a vocal and then a wood knock or vice versa. So do you think, do you think it's a, a wood knock or, or maybe even a rock clack? It, it's hard to tell. It could be a rock clack. Yeah. Let's listen uh, again. <laughs> it's a totally different language, man. Yeah. See, I wouldn't be able to make that sound like or no. come up with that sound. Well, my who does? It sounds like a native kind of a language. Oh, that's weird. Wow. And that's and that's the other thing too. I think a lot of people think that the Ron Moorhead sounds are going to be everywhere you record, and that's not the it, like every every language you record is going to be like Ron Moorheads, and that's not the case here. I think if if we're dealing with the Sasquatch, maybe it's a different type of Sasquatch or mm. a different tribe of them that they're not all going to have the samurai chatter and things like that. Could be just a different tribe with a different um, kind of language. That's fascinating. So, yeah. All right, let's see what we got here. Okay. okay, so that was recorded at California camp, and I was around midnight, and I was up with another Bigfoot researcher, and we were just talking at, at, at the fire. And all of a sudden, that thing just popped off behind us, way in the woods, behind Whoa. our camp, in the woods. But it was pretty damn close. <laughs> and and again, like that, it was even louder. That was even louder in person. But that thing just popped off right behind us, and then that was it. No other No other vocals or anything like that. I was for certain. I was like, he's going to say that that was him. But no, that's a sound that you capture. And it sounds really close to your camp, too. Yeah, it does. It sounds like it was right in the woods there, probably watching Whoa. us. But it, that came from uh, where uh, California camp is more like a slope. It's It kind of slopes up into another hill. But you can actually camp up on this hill as well. But where we were, where I was with this other Bigfoot researcher, we were at this campfire towards the entrance of the camp. And then this thing, whoever it was, came from the hill up behind us, behind our camp in the woods. And it was, like I said, it was very close and very loud. So whoever it was, was right there. And it has a really, like I, even Alex mentioned on his show, it, it's lung capacity is crazy and it carries. That sound carries too. Does it almost sound like it has a female tone to it? Yes. Or that's right. Yes. It, it, or maybe a yeah. ju juvenile, maybe a female. True, or a yeah, juvenile. That, that's a good point. Yeah, it's just it's really weird. I'm going to play it one more time. <laughs> oh, and that would mess with me, man. There's no campers behind us there, so I don't think it would. I personally don't think it was another camper. There's a road next to California camp, but there was no, as far as I remember, there's no campers around us at that point. So, and everybody else in our camp was asleep. It was just me and this other big, big researcher at the campfire. Nothing just popped off and only did it once. No other vocals wow. were heard that night. But oh, that was man. it. And he, he immediately said, That's a big foot as soon as he heard it. He, he said, <laughs> <laughs> he said that's a big fun absolutely <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's funny that, re that really freaked me out though hearing that person because you don't expect that it just happens out of nowhere um so yeah <sighs> i saved what i feel is my favorite for last if i had heard this i would probably i don't know what i would do. i would probably been like pack the bags because if we stick around here, we're just going to get taken out. But I'll play a little because it's, it's a long clip, but I'll play a few minutes of it here and then I'll have you talk about it. So, OK.
that went on for 30 minutes straight. Yeah, that's it's hard to explain, but that's the only clip that I almost had a feeling of. I don't know if dread is too over. It just makes it affects you when you hear it. And yeah, it's hard I, for me to explain. And I can't imagine hearing that in real life. Dude, it was it. it like I said, the 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 recorder doesn't do it justice. It, it was incredibly loud. I, I have you ever heard the Snohomish recordings from the seventies before? There there's some sounds in those recordings that are sound sound very similar to that. It, the who are they related? Who are they with again? I forget who there was. I forget who the woman's name was, but she was near a rock quarry, and these were coming from a rock quarry in Snohomish, Washington. Back okay, in the 70s, I, I know I've heard the name, but I can't think of what they sound like. So I'm going to have to uh, look that up later. Yeah, look that up later. But there's some what's called the whoop howl. And okay. immediately, as soon as I heard this in person, I said, wow, that sounds just like the Snohomish stuff. Now, I'm not saying that's the Snohomish recording. I'm just saying whatever that is sounds similar to that, the whoop howl. And like I said, the, when you hear that sound, it does sound like something dread, something you would dread and run away from, mm. like a male. That's a that's a male yelling, possibly a male a male Sasquatch. Do you think there were multiples in there, or yeah. just one? Yeah, I, throughout the whole recording, you'll hear different types of voices, possible female voices, maybe juvenile voices. It's like a whole chorus of them. And they were coming from different spots, too. It wasn't just one spot. It was, like, different spots from around the whole area there. Wow. Uh, and, again, this was at 2 o'clock in the morning. And oh, man. it went on for 30 minutes straight. There was no breaks in between, basically. So if it was a human doing this, why the hell would they be doing that for 30 minutes and with that kind of lung capacity and with that many people, so many, many individuals as well? And I've never heard I've never heard a, a vocal I've never heard anything like that before. Besides that whoop house stuff in the beginning, I've never heard the rest of the chorus stuff before. So again, if it was humans, why are they doing that two o'clock in the morning for thirty minutes? I mean, they didn't they didn't even stop. They if there are people call blasting, they didn't stop for a response. It just kept, it just keeps going. Which is so, that would be weird, right? Yeah, there's right. no yeah. That's a good point. Yeah, the chorus stuff is weird because it's I've heard other recordings that are similar to that from the Pacific Northwest, like the chorus thing. Yeah. But like yours is very unique as well. And man, so you you woke up at 2 a.m. and you heard that live. Yeah. The, well, that first call, you heard, that, that first thing woke me up. It was just so freaking loud. Wow. Yeah. When you hear that, rah, when you hear that thing, man, like that roar kind of sound, like that, that wakes, that woke me up out of my sleep. Oh my yeah. goodness. And unfortunately, my mother, my mother couldn't hear that in person. I can't, but that's why I have that. That's why I had that 16 minute version when I played on Alex's show. Cause I didn't want to have me and my mom talking while you hear that stuff going on. So that's why I had the edited version of just the sounds. I didn't wow. want my voice and her voice in it. And it, there's been some other Bigfoot researchers. I'll just say Dave Ellis has gotten sounds from there as well. That's kind of similar to that chorus sound. And oh, I've actually he's recorded himself. Yeah, you're saying, yeah, he's recorded there before, and oh, wow. he's gotten some sounds from there. And in fact, some some friends of mine who were there last year got something kind of similar to that in September. They recorded something kind of kind of similar to that, a little bit ways down from California. It was further away from California, but uh, California camp. But they recorded something kind of similar to that. Wow! But but again, like thirty minutes, man. Like, I why would anybody do that for thirty minutes? You they would blow out their vocal cords if it was some somebody Absolutely. singing or something like that. Absolutely. Yeah. What time of year did that happen in? That was in July. July 2020, okay. July 17th. So it was after, obviously it was after 4th of July. So obviously people, I, I mean, that's the thing too. Like this, people, people do go to this lake and camp and stuff. I mean, there are people there around, but I, I don't know. I don't know if, if the Sasquatch are comfortable with that or, or not. I mean, why, why would something mm. so elusive be making that sounds like that? That's, that's what makes me wonder. That's so weird. Are they that? are they that comfortable to make those kind of sounds, you know, and, 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 and for that loud, you know, being that loud too. So, but maybe have the Sasquatch you, are comfortable there. Yeah. I, I mean, we don't know. Have you had people analyze your, your sound, especially 
that clip there, like people like David Ellis? Yeah, Dave, Dave Ellis and Chris Spencer and Monongahela have all looked at it. And, oh, cool. um, you know, Dave Ellis and Chris Spencer say uh, it, it's not it's, it's wherever it is comes from a living thing. It, it's not mm-hmm. it's not. Yeah, they think it's from a living subject. And, and I guess Monongahela agrees with that. But he he made the he made the comment. I, I wish the audio was closer to the subjects, but I do, too. But, you know, I couldn't help that. <laughs> So. Right. <laughs> yeah. Good point. But they, oh, yeah, but they both, but stuff. they did say they think it comes from a natural, you know, source that it's not fabricated. Gotcha. And, and and for the record, I'm not hoaxing anything here. Like I'm just putting my recorder out there, capturing sound. So I'm not hoaxing anything. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you're you're camping out and having a recorder, doing some doing some wood knocks, doing some sounds yourselves at times. I'm just putting my recorders out there and letting them run, just like other wow. researchers are doing. I, I'm doing nothing different, really. <laughs> I got a few questions for you about about recording audio, and and hopefully, you know, people sure. can, listeners can can get some really solid advice from this. So, when it comes to, let's say you have someone, they're going out in the field. And it's their first time where they're going to try to record audio, right? Of, of a Bigfoot. What are the, the absolute, what's the, the necessity, the, the must know advice about recording audio out in the wild? Well, for one thing is I keep my audio recorders in plastic bags to keep from moisture and condensation. Obviously it rains a lot here in the Pacific Northwest. So I try to keep them covered mm-hmm. as much as I can. And I put them on bungee cords and I strap them to trees and such and just let them run. And sometimes I'll hide, I'll put moss on them too, to try to hide them and, and maybe put some different smells on it. Because here's the thing, like I mentioned earlier, I've had bears grab my recorders and chew them to bits or carry them off somewhere. Right. Now, I've lost recorders based on that. So I actually try to hide them with moss and put some different scents on them. So hopefully a bear won't sniff them out. But I think a bear is going to... I think a bear is attracted to the batteries. I've heard that before that there's something. I've heard that as well. Yep. That there's something that they're attracted to. So just be aware of that. You know, if you put in a battery operated, operated device out there, like even game cameras, I think they've done that with game cameras as well. And I, so going back to the recorders, I mean, I just, what I like to do is, as I mentioned with rock camp, I like to put them around, say that you're at a campsite. Mm -hmm. I like to go around the campsite, but not too close to it, but just, far enough to maybe where something can just watch you. And I like to put, you know, kind of put auto recorders in different spots, say one part of this hill and another part of the hill over here, kind of surrounding the campsite, but not too close to it. Just in case you might get something coming in and watching you. I like to do that. And as far as me, and and, you know, there's, there's also times where I just go to a research area and I'll just leave a recorder out like on a stump, high up on, on a stump or on a, or on a, on a hill or something like that, kind of high up. Cause I, I, I think the Sasquatch like to be in high places. So Absolutely, they may, yeah. they may come up and yeah. they may come up and down a hill, up and down a hill. So I try to keep them up high a little bit just in case they might, they might walk by it. But, you know, I, I'm really doing nothing special with these recorders. I'm just putting them out on trees and such and mm. making, making sure they're covered and, and I, I try to look for areas, I try to look for spots where there's water, like a lake or something. Okay. And then maybe there's a ridge you can walk up or something, like high, a high sure. a high hill or high spot where I think the Sasquatch might come up and down that hill to the water or to get maybe a, some kind of food source, like a deer or something. That's how I think these guys are operating. So, so going back to camping, if you have a high spot behind you, right. the possibility is Sasquatch might be going up and down that hill that mountain to watch you. So, and that's another thing too. I I like the idea of bringing them in as opposed to going out after them. I think you might have more better luck in capturing audio that way. If you bring them in. What if your camp was on the high spot? I did. It's just a random thought. No, that's a good idea. Yeah. If you can find a spot where you can camp up high, maybe, but I think the Sasquatch like that kind of cover idea. You know, they kind of like the idea of being able to have some cover. 
Right. And maybe they kind of, they might strategically, they might like to be up high to wash you. I'll, I'll just say, I'll just quickly talk about a, a quick thing that happened. And I think I sent you the audio of this too, but in one of my research areas, me and my mother put up a plot watcher in this little goalie. It's kind of like a, just like a, just like a hill you can climb up that overlooks mm-hmm. a, like a little goalie. And I believe we, I believe I've seen some foot traffic near where we put this pot watcher on this tree and up above us, there's like a stump. This is 30 yards away. There's a stump. And one time I put a recorder up there running on top of the stump. That's 30 yards away up above us. And down below my mother and I were putting up this pot watcher. And then when I went home and listened to the recorder, I heard some possible speech and chatter on the recorder as if possible Sasquatch might have come in and watched us put up that plot watcher. And I have that, I, I put that in your files. I think it's called Bigfoot Close to the Recorder. But you hear yep. some voices yep. talking to each other, and it's not me or my mom, so I don't know what the heck it is. Oh, wow. But, but that's the thing. I think I think in some instances, the Sasquatch might be watching people put up game cameras and, and things like that. And they might be up. they might be up high, too, where you can't see them. So they might be in a strategic place watching you. Mm. But I'm not saying that's always the case, but I think in some cases, maybe that's what's happening. And that's maybe that's why people aren't getting things on their game cameras because they're being watched. Oh, sure. As well. Do you have a specific recorder model that you use? Yeah, I would say, let's see if I can get it out here. Well, kind of a mess but I'll, I'll just show you one of the i'll show you one of my new ones this oh, is wow. a it's it yeah this is a, this is kind of expensive but it this is the kind of recorder um that i use it's like a it's a sony pcm recorder pcm d10 this is one of my new recorders i've got and it, it, it has two microphones on top Okay. And it's it's pretty hefty, but it will record. This will record for eight hours. And what it, and like I said, what I do is I just put it in a bag, and I just put these on put these on a tree or something, have them sticking out towards the forest away from camp, and I just have them record overnight. And yeah, yeah, that's a there you go. It's a whole night. Do you have to when you're setting up a recorder for the first time to use for Bigfoot? audio recording do you want to make sure that you do any specific settings a certain way or well that's the thing i know there's some filter settings noise filter settings but i re- i actually don't even use those i just i okay. i use a i use a i use adobe audition for my audio um you know, oh, sure. audio editing so i just use that if i need to bring down the noise on something but no honestly i really i just i just make sure i set the I set the parameters on this thing so it doesn't over peak. Obviously you have to set them. You have to set the speakers to a setting where it doesn't go into the red all the time. See, that's where, that's where it peaks. Gotcha. You get that real crappy audio. Well, other than that, man, like I just let it run and I let it run on, on normal play, not on long play. Cause long play will give you really bad audio. Just let it run normally. Okay. And yeah, in you know, recorders like this, will only run for eight hours because the batteries it, it, it eats up batteries pretty quickly. There's small recorders that I use that will actually record for uh, at least a day or two, like 24 to 48 hours. So, oh, wow. <clears throat> so I use those as well. I don't always use these big guys. I like to use this big guy when I'm camping out, mm-hmm. you know, like at bumping, for example. But if mm-hmm. I'm just going to a research area, I'll leave out these little small digital recorders and just leave them on trees for a few days or even a week or even a couple of weeks, even if they run out of batteries, I just, after a week or two, I'll just go back and grab them and listen to gotcha. whatever couple of nights that, that are on there. I got to say though, like definitely if people are going to be doing audio recording, try to get a parabolic dish because the voice quality is amazing on those things. And they'll, p- they'll pick up things even, even further away. And so I, and I, I've had pretty decent success with it too. So I recommend people try to get a, not satellite, a parabolic dish to use when audio recording. So you can use that with an audio recorder. I, Cause I I've, when I've seen oh, yeah. that used, it's for live monitoring, right? But you can use it for recording. You're saying. Oh yeah. Yeah. You can strap a, a oh, dish, wow. 
a dish to a tree and you have it, you can have it plugged into one of these guys. Wow. And you just have a recording. Yep. That's what I've been doing. Oh, man. I've been doing that with this and, 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 uh, and with a task cam, but that's my other big recorder is called a task cam. Yeah. You can hook them up to these things and they'll record whatever's on the, you know, from the dish. That feed how much longer, dish. how much longer do you think you're able to go up out roughly with a parabolic attached to it? Well, that's a, well, that's the thing. Like, the cord on the parabolic, at least the one that I have, doesn't go very far. So you have to you have to keep these close together. But like, what I usually do is I, I I'll, I'll tie both of these to a tree. Like I'll have I'll have the parabolic dish facing out on one side of the tree, and then I'll have this guy on the back of it, and I'll bungee cord both of them together, and have them have this recording. Both of them. Sorry, I, I said time. that question. Not good at all. What I meant to say was, so let's let's imagine with a regular recorder, you're able to capture like a mile out of sound. Oh, How yeah. much further out do you think you're able to capture if you've got a parabolic mic in the mix? Yeah, I'm sorry. I, I miss I'm totally misheard or misinterpreted. Maybe. Well, I don't I, I don't know if these will record a mile out, maybe. But yeah, maybe double that. I'm not the best wow, with okay. distance, man, but maybe double that. Especially gotcha. depending on especially, especially the how big the dish is, how big of a dish you're working and how much sound mm. it can funnel and pick up. Gotcha. Gotcha. Too. Very interesting. That's the thing. There's I've used this before. This is like oh, a forty dollar okay. one you can get on Amazon. Yeah. Oh nice. Uh, you can you can actually this is like for birds, but you can actually take this out and record with it as well. But the other dish that I work it, it, that I have is bigger than this, but this is just a little small example of something. You can okay. Use. You just have to, you have to click in the trigger for it to record, but you can still hear it. It, it still captures pretty well. Pretty, pretty good audio. Are you of the mindset that you start recording right when you get to the campsite or when do you usually start your, your recording? Well, when I'm camping, I, I like to wait till it gets dark. And I, I, and a lot of times I even, I even try to put them out as it's, it's getting dark. And I, that's the thing. I, I'll walk up the hill when it's dark out and I'll just put a recorder up there with a flashlight or something with a headlamp or a flashlight. I'll just go up on the hill and put a recorder out even when it's dark. But mm -hmm. I believe we get, I get, I, I believe we get most activity during the night and as we're at the campfire. So I like to put them out right, right as we're going to the campfire for the night. And I just let them run all night. And then I go back in the morning and pick them up. If I'm, if, if I'm camping there, I just pick them up in the morning. Have you ever considered doing a long-term field recording unit? And I don't know if you'd be able to put it in the area out there. I've talked to Chris Spencer about units like that before. Right. Yeah. With Chris's unit there. Yeah. I, I, I would love, that's something I'd love to try. I don't have one, but I would be interested in trying that out. But the, the other thing is going through audio is a heck of a process. Like you have to sit it there really and listen is. To, <laughs> you have to sit there and listen to hours and hours of audio. So that, that's why it's I kind of, that's why it was some of my recordings. I like to just go at night and then I can get through the night possibly. And you know, I, obviously, if you have a spectrogram or a graph, you can see these little spikes and hopefully you'll, you just zero in on that and go, oh, that could be a possible sound. But that's, that's, exactly the, that's there's there's been sounds that I, the audio that the recorder picks up. But when you look at them on a spectrograph, they're really low. They don't oh, always man. show up as like big spikes or anything. You actually have to really listen for it, like little blips and things like that, because they're not always going to be real loud. So that's another thing I want to bring up is that if you're looking on a spectrograph, don't always look for the big waves because you got to get stuff in between that or even down below where it gets kind of no where the noise is too. You have to really look for these little red, these little orange bumps and things like that in between. Oh, interesting. There's, other, there's some other sounds going on, man. It's not always like these big wavelengths. So speech, for example. Okay. Okay. For like speech sounds, as opposed to like howls and stuff, you get yeah. like little blips of things. Or like the zipper sound, that zipper sound that, that we were going through earlier, those yeah. don't go like this. They're, they're like little no. little things on the spectrogram no. you got to look for. Yeah, you could easily so, overlook that if you were just going by spectrogram. Yeah. It, yeah. Or if you're not listening for it, you're just gonna, you might overlook it because you're not looking for the big, the big 
wave points on there. So absolutely. Yeah. Oh man, Tristan, this has been a very, very interesting uh discussion. And thank you for sharing your audio with me and my listeners. That was cool. Oh yeah, man. Totally. Very cool. Yeah, you're welcome. Yeah. I, yeah. Uh, I recommend people just going out there and recording as much as they can, if they're going to be researching. That's all I could. I mean, that's all I'm doing. I'm nobody special doing this. I'm just putting my, my audio recorders out there and hopefully it captures something, but you don't always do go. that. You know, you don't always get something on audio. So hopefully we'll be checking in with you in the future. And who knows? Yeah. Who knows what will come out of, bumping lake next it's especially maybe even if you camp up and on the hill we'll I'm see if that happens or not but you know yeah. that would be a wild adventure but were any last thoughts before we we close out the night well I, just in general like even what i mentioned in tate's documentary when you go squatching you're not always gonna get you're not you're not always gonna have something happen mm-hmm. it's not like what you see on the entertainment shows like expedition bigfoot or something for example right you're not always going to have something happen to you so i just i just want people to understand that it's, the reality is is that not a lot happens when you're going out there and i've had so many hours of recordings where i have nothing on them so it's not like, it's not like every time i go out there i get something but hey if you're in the right spot yeah sure maybe you'll get something but don't always expect to get audio or anything or audio or other kinds of evidence every time you go out squashing it because that's really that's just the reality of it, in my opinion. And so I just want people to know that the reality of Bigfooting is that not a lot happens. And sometimes you get lucky. Sometimes you get something, but it's not like what you see on TV. Exactly. And if you don't, if you do go out and you don't get anything, stick with it. Try again, try again. And eventually you'll get lucky. How can people, is there any ways that people can keep up to date with what you're doing, Tristan, or, or, or contact you or anything like that? Or is it saying where you kind of keep under the radar? Yeah. Well, the thing is, I, I don't post my stuff publicly. I mean, I'm happy okay. to share them like on podcasts, like with you or anybody, honest, honestly, but yeah, I don't, uh, I have a YouTube page, but that's not dedicated to Sasquatch. It's that's just, okay more other stuff but if people want to reach me they can go on facebook i'm on tristan yolton they can contact sure. me there message me there and i can talk to i'll be happy to talk to them about anything and but yeah i mean if i get anything new i'll contact you or somebody else about it and i'd be happy yeah. to share them i'm happy to share them yeah. share my stuff with anybody i mean there's nothing to hide <laughs> cool so yeah so there there you have it. it's one of those interviews where if you see if you see the name Tristan Yolton pop up in a podcast, it's going to be something good. So make sure you, if it's not on Bigfoot Society, it's something else. Listen to that one too. But Tristan, thank you so much for coming on. This has been a, a really fun and also uh, learned a lot about audio recorders. Thank you. Well, thank you for having me. I had a great time. Just want to take a few minutes to say thank you to you, all my listeners, for listening to the podcast. Please take a minute to help out the show by subscribing on YouTube, making sure you hit the bell so you don't miss any notifications, and share the episode on YouTube with a friend. Also, if you're listening to us on a podcast, thank you so much. Make sure that you're subscribed, share the show with a friend. Really, it's all about sharing the show wherever you can. If you've had a Bigfoot encounter related to the following or know someone who has, please reach out to me at bigfootsociety at gmail.com or pass on my email. Here's a list. If you or any relative were involved with Bigfoot sightings in the late 1970s or talked to Kevin or Clifford with the IBIC, I would love to talk to you. Please reach out. And to share anything Bigfoot related from this area, if you've got anything else you'd like to share from the Mount Shasta area, I'm not going to decline that either. A special thank you to all the Bigfoot Society Patreon and YouTube channel members. It's your support that helps keep the show going, and I extremely appreciate it.